A stir fry, I believe, is a solution to utilizing all those morsels that are left over in the fridge. Even as a chef, we always have leftovers. I'm sure you do too. Whether it's half a rotisserie chicken, some cabbage, maybe some peppers. So the first thing we're gonna do is make the sauce. For the sauce, I'm gonna use some mirin. Mirin is a Japanese rice wine. It's, just, it's got no alcohol in it. Now, you could use some Pinot Grigio if you wanted to for this recipe. Uh, we're also gonna be using some sweet soy sauce. They use that a lot in Indonesian and Malaysian cooking. If you didn't have sweet soy sauce, you could use soy sauce and a little bit of honey. I'm gonna add some cornstarch. Cornstarch for this recipe is gonna thicken that sauce. Very popular in Asian cooking. That's what gives it that gravy feel. And then oyster sauce. Oyster sauce has that distinctive taste and it's really wonderful. It gives it a nice saltiness and mouth feel. And then we're gonna add some chicken stock. You could add some water if you didn't have chicken stock. So you can see here, we've got the fundaments of the sauce. I'm gonna whisk this together. And the sauce is gonna look relatively thin at this stage. But remember, when that cornstarch heats up and comes up to a boil, it's gonna thicken it up. So now for the ingredients, I'm gonna turn on the pan and I'm just using my non-stick skillet. You could use your cast iron skillet for this. I'm gonna put some oil in the pan. You could use peanut oil or you could use canola oil. I've actually got olive oil. I think all too often, for some reason, people think that olive oil, you can't get a good smoke point on it, but you can. I'm not using extra virgin. I always use olive oil. I find that olive oil is better for the body and I'm not saying I'm a bodybuilder. I wanna get this piping hot. Um, and the reason why I wanna get it piping hot is I wanna get a char on that cabbage. This cabbage, if we get a nice char on it, it's gonna be delicious. And I've just taken the cabbage and shredded it. Almost, um, you know, like when you have chopped suey, I think that's where the inspiration for this one this morning. Okay, this is getting nice and hot now. We're gonna add the cabbage. And this takes about five minutes to get some nice color on it. Don't move it straight away. Just let that go. Let that just have a good time on the bottom. Let that first part get nice and brown. Then we'll toss it. Small amounts of salt. Don't wanna to add too much salt when you're doing Asian food because remember soy sauce, oyster sauce is gonna have a lot of salt in them. So we don't wanna to add too much. Just a little bit to draw out a little bit of that moisture. I think one of the things I love about cabbage, Brussels sprouts, all of those bitter vegetables, when you get a char on them, it really does change them and that's an amazing flavor. So as we look in the pan, as we toss this over now, you'll see a nice char. See that char? And that to me really does add a great flavor to this dish. The depth of that flavor from that cabbage is absolutely spot on, like on the money. Here's the serving dish. I'm gonna put the cabbage down the bottom. Okay, happy days. Placing that off to one side. Let's make the sauce, a little bit of olive oil, garlic, been minced, a couple of garlic cloves. Uh, I couldn't find some fresh ginger in the market, so I've got some ginger paste. Uh, you know, sometimes if um, ginger's on sale at the store, just take it and blend it into a paste with a little bit of oil and put it into your, um, into your freezer, into ice cubes. Ginger comes in. You can see the ginger and the garlic, happy days. Just getting them blooming a little bit. And now we're gonna add the sauce. Just give it a quick stir before you add it. Adding the sauce. Already the studio is smelling marvelous. I wish you were in the kitchen with me. This bloody studio smells gorgeous. It's 7.44 in the morning and we're cooking this magnificent dish. And people say, I mean, seriously, there's no, there's no way. I've always wanted the six pack. There's no blooming way. It's 7.44, 7.45 now in the morning. I'm cooking a dish like this. I can't, I just, you know I'm gonna eat it. I can't resist it. I'm talking to you now. I'm, I'm just salivating. Okay, look, white pepper. 
White pepper is important in Asian cooking. It really does add a distinctive taste. It's basically black pepper with the, uh, the husk taken off. A little bit of chili flake, not too much, just a little bit, just to give you the nice nuances. Okay, now we're looking to get this sauce and you want it the consistency of honey. Because remember, the noodles are going to absorb and some of the chicken's going to absorb that sauce. I'm using udon noodles, um, very popular in Japan. Uh, but please don't think you can't make this. You can make this with soba noodle, you can make it with uh, an egg noodle, you can make it with linguine spaghetti, you can make it with bucatini. It's just a noodle. Don't let that be the barrier. I brought the water up to boil. Um, I haven't added any salt to the water for this one. It's not like cooking pasta. I like to just bring it up to a boil, let it cook for about five minutes. And then, um, because we've got a lot of sodium in the sauce, so I just want to be a little bit careful. Put them in, don't disturb these at the moment. Let them just rehydrate slightly. They've been vacuum sealed. And you can get this in most grocery stores now, if not Asian stores, and then they do sell them online. You can see that they've now cooked. If you take a look at them, a couple of ways you can get them out. You can fish them out with using the spider, or you could use some simple tongs. Sometimes tongs can be a little bit easier. Just letting the excess water drain. Oh, I'm just gonna use the column there. I was too lazy to go over to the sink. I had the column there. Yeah, the slippery slappery noodles. Okay, let the noodles come in. So now we've got the noodles in there. We've got the cabbage. We're gonna add the chicken. I just warmed it up for a minute in the microwave. And I'm just gonna toss these together. I'm gonna to drizzle a small amount of sesame seed oil. And that's a finishing oil, dark sesame seed oil. It's not an oil like, you know, olive oil, where we cook with it. We just wanna finish with it. And it gives this the dish this really nutty flavor. We've already prepared that sauce, so we're just gonna heat it up again just to make sure. I'm gonna add some white scallions to it because I want some of the crunch. Stir this around and just bring this up to a boil and then we're gonna toss it all together. I wish sometimes that you were in the kitchen with us uh, just to smell this. Okay, this is the point where you take that final test just to see if you're happy with the sauce. See if you need salt, pepper, anything like that. Have that final test. Once it's in, you know you're gonna be serving it straight away. You wanna really serve it as soon as you can because the noodles and the chicken are gonna absorb that sauce. So now I'm gonna take the sauce, let me turn it towards the cameraman because that's the way he likes it. And then we just wanna to toss all the ingredients together. So we're just gonna get some tongs and toss them all. Now come and look in, Mr. Cameraman. Just listen to that. Look at the way it's coated those noodles. You can see that it's not over sauced. There's just enough to coat it. At this stage, I'm gonna add some scallion tails. We're gonna add some fresh cilantro, which is gonna add a lovely floral note to it. If you don't like cilantro, feel free to just omit that. Some sesame seeds to add some crunch. And then some scallions. And there you have just a quick chicken noodle stir fry. And that's it my easy, effortless stir fry, just by using ingredients that were in the fridge. I hope you enjoy this recipe. The recipe is in the description below. Also some links to some other great cooking segments. Yes, the mine. If you did like today's show, please subscribe. Please subscribe. We're trying to build up a better audience, an audience around the world where we can share joy, laughter, and positivity. Uh, also, please share it, share the recipe. If you do make the recipe, leave a comment below. We love to hear from you. Until next time, I'm John Ashton. See you soon. Cheerio for now.